Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to another video on my channel here at Licious Eve. Make sure to subscribe if you guys haven't done so, so that you guys are updated on my second hair transplant journey progress, as well as video topics covering current hair loss treatments in the pipeline. Make sure to visit my website, hairlicious.com, to follow my current hair loss treatment regimen, which includes micro needling and dermal rolling, my DHT blocking shampoo and serum, low level laser therapy cap, and my hair growth vitamin supplements. So every week, I get a lot of questions pertaining to finasteride. There's a lot of people who want to take finasteride, but they're afraid of some of the stuff that they've read online in terms of you know side effects, including sexual dysfunction, issues with cognitive function, worrying about fertility, prostate cancer. And it really doesn't help when you have a full forum full of people with post you know finasteride syndrome. And then you have Reddit posts on Trestless, which talk about you know various side effects. I don't want anybody misinterpreting this video and thinking that I don't believe all these people who are claiming side effects from finasteride because I really do believe people experience various side effects and it's also the same case with any type of medication, especially from a hormone altering medication such as finasteride, which inhibits the enzyme 5 alpha reductase. And to our knowledge, that is actually one of the main causes of hair loss when testosterone is converted to DHT. The purpose of this video isn't to go over the side effects of finasteride, but rather to show you guys the long-term studies that were conducted for 10 years on finasteride. Show you guys that most men who are using finasteride are not going to have side effects. And those who do experience side effects are going to be a very small minority. And hopefully this video is going to put those at ease who are considering taking finasteride. But unfortunately, the best number one way to combat androgenetic alopecia is with anti-androgens like finasteride or dutasteride. I talk about other secondary hair loss treatments like low-level laser therapy caps, microneedling, minoxidil. But the best and most effective way to slow down and even possibly reverse hair loss is with anti-androgens. Currently, there's really no way around it. And we've talked about upcoming cures for hair loss treatments, you know, Shiseido, Dr. Suji, and a bunch of other hair loss treatments in the pipeline. But to date, there are no cures. Stem cell replication is still unable to produce human hair follicles that are successful in growing hair on the scalp. So the best option, if you really want to treat hair loss from further progression, is with antiandrogens. I get a lot of people asking me if it's a good idea waiting for uh, you know, stem cell hair replication. And I always tell them not to wait because nothing is ever promised. And in the past several decades, the best anti-androgen treatment that we had since 1998 is finasteride. So it's been over 20 years since finasteride was first approved for male pattern baldness. And there really hasn't been anything better since. So honestly, it's, it's in your best interest to not wait because the longer you wait, the more hairs you guys are more likely to lose. And the thing about treating hair loss is by being proactive. Prevention is key. Uh, the faster you guys actually try to do something about your hair loss, the better your outcome is going to be and the more hairs that you guys are going to be able to keep on your scalp. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the long-term studies on the efficacy of finasteride as well as tolerability in men who have been taking them for 10 whole years. That's a lot of time to be taking finasteride and hopefully the data that I share with you guys is going to put your mind at ease in those who are considering taking finasteride. So the first study that I found online evaluated the efficacy and safety of one milligram of finasteride uh, in a day in over 500 Japanese men who were taking finasteride for 10 years up to January 2019. Links for the study are going to be included in the description box for those who want to read more about it. Now, these are yearly photos that were taken from a patient up to the 10-year mark. And in terms of efficacy, there has been gradual overall improvement in hair growth, indicating that even after 10 years, finasteride is still going to be effective. Here's another patient with scalp photos at the first visit and yearly, which also shows relatively good improvement over the decade of finasteride use. Now, in terms of objective efficacy, the study revealed improvement and prevention of hair loss progression in over 99% of the 532 Japanese men with androgenic alopecia who were treated with one milligram of finasteride for the past 10 years. The study also mentions that younger patients uh, showed more improvement than the older patients. So like I mentioned, earlier treatment is going to be key. Now, in terms of safety evaluation during the 10 years, there was no serious adverse reaction uh, that was recognized. Mild and temporary adverse reactions were recorded in 6.8% of the entire study population. And the main side effects were, you know, decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, and all the patients actually continued treatment for the next 10 years. So according to the study, less than 7% of the patients encounter side effects. So the one thing that I do want to add is that the incidences of decreased libido, uh, erectile dysfunction, sexual dysfunction have been known to increase in proportion to age. So the older you get, the more common these side effects are going to be. 
Uh, so that can also affect the percentile with those suffering from these side effects from finasteride. Overall, long-term treatment with 1 mg finasteride demonstrated high efficacy and safety based on subjective and objective evaluations. And not surprisingly, men with lower-grade hair loss showed greater improvement than those with a more moderate form of hair loss. So like I said, the key is to be proactive and treating hair loss at a younger age. Now, the next study involves another 10-year follow-up of daily 1 mg finasteride users suffering from androgenetic alopecia in different age groups. The study population had 118 men uh, between the ages of 20 and 61 years of age, and the study was actually conducted in Europe, in Rome, Italy. Here are a few photos of some before and after results in finasteride users during the 10-year period from baseline. Over the 10 years, it shows great improvement overall. Now, adverse side effects were observed in only 5.9% of patients, libido and ejaculation reduction, as well as uh, erectile dysfunction. So just like the previous study of Japanese men, only a small minority of people suffer from side effects even after the 10-year period. And in terms of efficacy, nearly 86% of men had benefits from the treatment duration, meaning that the majority were actually able to keep the hair. Now, finasteride 1 milligram was generally well tolerated and long-term treatment led to sustained improvement in treated men. Now, the last study that I wanted to share with you guys is an evaluation of long-term efficacy of finasteride in 166 Korean men for a period of five years. According to medical records, only 7.9% of men experienced sexual side effects, with the majority being decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, and decreased oral watery semen. And aside from sexual side effects, one person had liver function abnormality, one had gastro issues, and the other had enlarged breasts. Um, in the study, the proportion of patients showing improvement, including no disease progression, was 98.4% after five years of treatment of finasteride which once again really shows the efficacy and safety tolerability of finasteride users. So in conclusion, these long-term studies ranging from 5 to 10 years show that not only is finasteride effective in treating hair loss and slowing down further hair loss, but also the fact that the majority of the men using finasteride 1 milligram per day are not going to have any sexual side effects. Best treatment we currently have is 5-alpha reductase inhibitors and Time is of the essence if you want to halt for the hair loss. You really have to be proactive, like I said, the early treatment is key. So if you guys do consider taking finasteride, I recommend speaking with a doctor who is knowledgeable in finasteride, just so that you guys are aware of the possible yet unlikely side effects and to make sure that there's nothing that's going to be interfering with your current health situation. Uh, so I actually don't get paid to do these videos on finasteride by Merck, but rather I wanted to inform you guys the low chances of getting side effects from taking finasteride. So hopefully this video puts your mind at ease. Um, I will also be taking finasteride again soon, and as a previous user of finasteride myself, I have not experienced any side effects. And if you guys were wondering why I stopped taking finasteride, um, I'm actually going to be going back on finasteride once my wife conceives. So I'm going to be keeping you guys posted once I get back on finasteride. So hope this video was helpful. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you guys liked it. If you guys have any questions, please make sure to leave me some comments in the comment section below. And I will talk to you guys next time in my next video. Take care.